In 2012, it will be 100 years since the sinking of the Titanic. Over the next five minutes, I'm going to dive into the history of that famous ship. In 1912, headlines and history were made. On April 14th at 11.40pm, RMS Titanic careered into an iceberg. At approximately 100 feet wide and 400 feet high, the iceberg sheared open five of the ship's hull compartments, rendering the imposing cruise liner defenceless against the vast amount of ocean. The question I want to ask the public is could this tragedy have been prevented? Yeah, well, the Titanic was built in, in Belfast and they said that it was unsinkable and I think that was probably the biggest problem with why the Titanic sank, which is that they were too, uh, too sure of themselves and um, they may have developed better systems for looking out for icebergs, especially at that time of the year because they drift down from the north. Um, so I think uh, to prevent any ship from sinking um, uh, was a big ask in the early 20th century. So they, they were too sure of themselves and um, that was the main problem as to why the Titanic sank. So it was a real disaster when it did. I don't really think nothing could have been done to prevent it. I think uh, it could have been prevented if there'd been more lifeboats, if there was enough for everybody because what happened, I believe, was there just wasn't enough lifeboats. The following hours proved chaotic, as passengers and crew ran for their lives. It was then at 2.30am on April 15, 1912, RMS Titanic, once named the unsinkable ship, disappeared into a watery grave, taking 1,800 of her passengers and crew with her. Titanic was, and still is, one of the most famous cruise liners ever to set sail in open waters. I spoke to the public on how they first learned of this once horrific tragedy. Well, um, when I was a, a child growing up, of course, it, uh, the event was uh, not quite so far away in those days of um, the disaster that happened, and uh, it was very prominent in most people's minds. But of course, with the um, the making of the, the James Cameron movie Titanic, that brought it back to prominence even more so in uh, a whole new generations of uh, people. And then of course with those wonderful diving bell sequences uh, that you could see for real of the Titanic when you found it at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, um, many people became much more interested in it and, uh, and uh, it kind of regenerated my enthusiasm for it. So uh, I tend to study it a little bit even though it's uh, a very sad, sad event. Milvina was only nine weeks old when she and her family travelled on board RMS Titanic. She was the last survivor of the disaster which took her father's life. Speaking in 2009, Milvina tells us of her experience and memories from the Titanic. I think I must be rather an odd person because I don't think anything about it. I mean, all these people come to see me and talk to me and I'm, I'm quite happy, as they said lots of times, because whenever I go, I'm surrounded by hundreds of people. And they said, oh, aren't you fed up with all these people? And I said, no, I like people, and I do. Any nationality, no matter whether they're rich or poor, they're all the same to me. I like them. Sadly, Milvina passed away in the early hours of Sunday morning on May 31st, 2010, aged 97. She led a happy life. No one really knows for sure exactly what happened on that tragic night. Conspiracies say that it may have been the Japanese or the captain going too fast in icy waters. The design of the ship was not up to standard. Could all those lives have been saved if there were more lifeboats? No one really knows for sure and probably never will. But what is sure is that Titanic was a tragedy that could have been prevented.